Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you a few ways to improve your buttons in Scratch. We'll be taking a button from this to this. So buttony. There are a lot of different methods to make your buttons look and feel great. Oh, and also don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, let's get into this tutorial. So as you can see here, we have this button that is very plain and boring looking. There's no interaction with it. You can't tell you're even hovering over it. So let's start by making the costume itself look good. Now, here's a few tips for you. Have your stuff centered and then make the size of the button kind of fit somewhat the text. And also try to pick nice colors that complement each other and fit together. So for instance, this kind of looks weird right now because this is a neon green and then the black. It just doesn't look as good as I would like. Now obviously this is quite up to opinion and your style of art, so I can't tell you too much, but I can show you what I like. So for me, I'd personally like this a little bit less saturated and a slightly different hue, probably something a little bit more like that. And to make this pop a little more, I can change the text to white. The other thing is like to make them in all caps, and you can also make these fonts look a little nicer by giving them some outline so it makes them look even bolder. So just give that outline of two, and then make the outline the same color as the fill. As you can see, it just makes it look nice and bold. And now that we have that, we should probably increase the size of our button itself. And you know what? Let's even give it an outline. So if we give it an outline of two, say, we'll want to find a nice color that complements it. I think that looks pretty good. Now this really isn't that good of a button, but it is more clean than our last button. Of course, that's all up to opinion like I said earlier. So now that we have that, that immediately improves the look of our button because it just looks nicer to look at. Now here's where there's a ton of different things we can do to this. We can make it get bigger when you hover over it. We can make it float up and down when you hover over it. We can make it rotate when you hover it. We can make it switch it to a different costume. So let's just start with a basic one. Let's make it bigger when you hover over it. So add a wind green flag clicked and then a forever loop. Now just change the size by 10. Now all we need to do is pull a divided by in here and then a minus on the left side. Next we just want to put the size in the right side of that minus. So now we can put the values we want in these two. So the one in the minus is the size we want it to go to. So I will make it go to size 100 which is just the default and the divided one is the smoothness. So I'll do two. The larger this number the more smooth it will be. So you can now see that really nothing is different but if we pull out a change size by and we do that you can see that it'll always smoothly go back to a size 100. So now all you would need to do is add an if else and check if we are touching the mouse pointer and then duplicate this and maybe set the size to like 120. You can now see whenever we are hovering over this it smoothly gets bigger and that looks really really nice. Maybe we want it to make it to where the background turns white and the text turns green when we hover over it. That's just a simple costume change. So inside of the costumes let's make a start button 2 and name this start button hover and now we can go ahead and just fill the background with white and now go into the original start button click on it so you get the fill click on the bucket tool and then change that to a normal one now go back in here and you can now fill in the text now we can just make the outline the same exact color and now it's just the opposite so basically now all we need to do is put that inside of our code so if we're touching the mouse pointer switch costume to the hover otherwise switch costume to the start button so now you can see that whenever we hover over it, it gets bigger and it also does a cool costume change. Maybe you want this button to kind of turn left to right. A cool algorithm you can do is just a point in direction, now a plus sign, and then the direction you want to be. So I'll do 90 because that's like the default. Now just take the sign of the timer and now take that timer times a number. I'll do 100. Take all the sign times another number. I'll do 2. The second number is the amount that it will do whatever it's doing. So in this case it's turning if I do this like 50 you can see now it's turning a lot and then this 100 is the speed of it so if I do like 500 now you can see that it does it a lot faster this button is smoothly kind of rotating left to right and when we hover over it it will get bigger you can do this with the position too so pull out a set y2 and then put that in there and now put in zero because that's the middle of the screen and now if we start this game you can see that it's loading up and down I'll do like five so you can see it better you can see now that it is is actually floating up and down and that looks cool too. Another little thing you can do is a turn and now duplicate the size algorithm and then just swap it out for direction. So you can do 90 minus direction divided by 2 and now it'll always smoothly turn to direction 90. So if I do like turn 15 degrees you can see it'll always go back to 90. So that means that in another loop we can do a finger and five clicked 
forever. If we are touching the mouse pointer, then we can go ahead and turn two degrees clockwise. Wait until we aren't touching the mouse pointer so it doesn't keep doing that. And now you can see that whenever we hover over it, it does this like cool little turn thing. Another cool detail we can add is if we hover over the right, it'll tilt towards the right. And if we hover over the left, it'll tilt to the left. So let's do that. If we go ahead and just add an if else and now check if the X position is less than the mouse X, which means we are to the left of it, then turn right. Otherwise, just turn counterclockwise. And now you can see that if we're on the right side, it'll tilt towards the right when we hover over it. And if it's on the left side, it'll tilt towards the left. We can even take this a step further. Let's add a little cool sound to it. Right when we hover, just play the sound hover until done. And this hover sound is just a cool little hover sound. Now it's even better because when we hover over it, it plays a nice sound and that makes it even more responsive. So you can kind of see now that with all these different algorithms and stuff, you can really start to make a extremely polished and nice button. And I accidentally got rid of the float animation. So let's add that back in real quick. Okay, so these are my settings here. So now that we have that, this is the final button. Very responsive and nice to hover over. And I really like how it came out. Make sure to stick around because next week I'm going to be posting a tutorial on how to add functionality to these buttons. So what I mean by that is instead of this button just sitting here it'll actually do something like when we click on it it starts a game so maybe i'll show how to add like a start button that starts the game when you click on it or a stop button that stops the game or a mute button that will mute the game when you click on it it's all the basic buttons that you need for your game so yeah make sure to stick around thank you all so much for watching i hope this tutorial helps you out if it didn't don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing and leave a comment down below i love to hear what you guys think but anyway this has been owen and i am out